Welcome to a Real Man Wood podcast. This is Chris Liss of Rotowire, and I am joined by Yahoo Sports Dalton Del Don on the eve of baseball season. What's going on, dude? How you doing? Doing all right. Um, I'm not even sure why I did it, but uh, for some reason, I recently uh, re-upped uh, an online subscription for XM. So I've been listening to far too much of you lately. <laughs> uh, I mean, I know you don't. Back in the day, I used to uh, when I had like a different job, I'd drive around a lot more, but. But ever since, you know, the last few years, I have not had a subscription. So you're my you're poisoning my mind is all I got to say. <laughs> it's, it's, I've already it's already sunk. I've already lost my investment. Just just the, the, right. Just listening to you too much. I get it. I hear you. Uh, well, it's a mistake on your part, but it's also annoying because Jeff is already such a nutless monkey, just like yourself, who has right, no original right. thought for himself. And I already saw in his beef Jeff Erickson league last night that I thought he did a, a good job on. He basically took like five of the players that I specifically told him that I want to take. So now I know I've got you and him in that league in the Yahoo Friends and Family tomorrow that we're drafting. And now it's going to be super annoying because you're both going to be taking my players because you know who I like now. In the past, you know, you might have had like a couple guys that you know who I was taking because you, you and I would do this, you know, this podcast right. together. But now it's like if you've been listening to the radio show, now you know everything. And of course, I don't look into like who you rank where on the fantasy pros or Yahoo or something because A, it's obviously wrong and B, I don't. I don't want to know. I don't want to poison my brain with other people's opinions. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, I was listening to you guys today, and it was interesting to hear Jeff talk about his draft because uh, I just just on a whim because I knew uh, labor this weekend. Um, there's also a, a thing that Justin Mason put together. I don't know if you've, you've heard about it. I think, I think Jeff's doing a great fantasy baseball invitational yeah. starting tomorrow morning, and the, the friends and family draft is tomorrow as well. So this is just really kicking in for me here. So I did an NFBC uh Rotowire online championship last night. Oh, so you, did? Um, you signed so up for I one. Did, I signed up for one and, and did it. Um, I ended up getting the number one pick. And there's some uh, some guys in there. Um, uh, Billy Hayes, he goes by on Twitter that follows yeah, I know me. He is. Probably. Yeah, I know that guy. And um, like uh, who's that guy? Derek Pearson. He's he's a shark. I mean yeah. that guy. He well, does he, really well. He, he thinks he is. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. He, he, he talks shit to me on, online too. So yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I don't know. Yeah. He believes. I don't know. First, but I think Vlad is friends with him. But but anyway, so it was, it was a good group of dudes, and I and I got the number one pick. But you know, I'm ready to bore you with my team. But uh, I will just say that no, no, bore me with your team. I want to know. I want to know who to take of yours. If I uh, like, obviously, I don't care who you take because I'm not going to take whoever you like. But if I'm totally stuck on a pick, I think a default might just be to take someone I know you like. All right. Okay. So I'll, I'll just run by my run over my team really really quick. Obviously, Trout won. Um, so then at the wheel, I don't think it's obvious, but it's it's the nutless monkey thing to do, of course. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I, I haven't really paid too close attention to ADP, so some of this might be a little drastic. But anyway, so coming back, I got um 12 team league. Uh, right. Some of them are 15. This is 12 team, just to point out. I got JD Martinez, and I just said screw it, and I took Syndergaard. No, th- first of all, those are both perfectly good picks. I almost took Syndergaard at 2.6 in my league. I took Freeman, but I was very close to taking Syndergaard. So. Yeah, I mean, of course, dude's throwing 100 miles an hour. I mean, what do you want? Right. So that's, that's I know he's gonna. He's like the biggest bust, high risk, high reward. I know, taker. but fuck it. A real man takes Syndergaard on that turn. Actually, like, real man doesn't let him get down to you. That's good. JD Martinez right. and him with Trout. Who's who's, yeah, who's I, at the four or five? I have uh, Martinez as a borderline first round pick. Um, so so at the four and five, Reese Hoskins, and this that's this might stupid. be a nut, nutless monkey pick here is Wilson Contreras in a two catcher league. I, I took him over uh, Starling Marte went directly afterward, and Craig Kimbrell. Yeah, you know the catchers. Oh, you took him over Kimbrel. Oh, that's a bad. That's a bad yeah. pick. I mean, might be. There, there's two two areas of scarcity, right? I mean, steals are a third one, but you can get steals from anybody. But it's closers and catchers, catchers. right? And so you know, you get one or the other. I would have gone Kimbrel, but people love Contreras. It's not you know you do have to in a two catcher league. It, it does start to make sense to take Posey and him around there. I got Posey in the sixth in mind. I'd rather Posey in the sixth than Contreras in the first pick of the fifth. Right. Yeah. No, I admit. I mean, I knew he wasn't coming back. Him, yeah. Shit. You really could have loaded yeah. up. Damn. I know. You really might blew have been it. a mistake. Might have been a mistake. Okay. Right, so so six else? and seven. Six and seven. Uh, Billy Hamilton and Justin Turner. Just, Turner's my guy. But right. um, I heard you guys comparing like Beltre five, six rounds later. Is that what you said today? I, I mean, kind of agree. Yeah. I, they're kind of the same guy, really, if you look at him. Yeah. But Beltre is also, he's also like one of the best hitters. I mean, sorry. Turner's also could be considered like one of the, the elite hitters. I know the counting stats haven't caught up, but like you look at like the WRC plus, he's like, He's like a legit, like an elite top ten hitter the last three. Well, years. look at look at Beltre. Right. Yeah, what do you, what do you think Beltre batted last year in like the hundred games he played or hundred nine games he played? Yeah. Um, oh, well, well, OPI, I don't know, eight fifty. No, no. I'm saying what was his batting average? 
Three hundred. Like three fifteen or three four three oh eight or something like that. You know, I mean, it's, it was good with power. I mean, he was hitting for average and power at age thirty seven, thirty eight. Yeah, he's, he's like a fun. 34, you know? Right. No, he's a fun player to own. I, I bring that up because I thought of that when you guys brought, right. said that. I'm like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So anyway, so so the other turn, um, Trevor Story and Robinson Cano. I'm not a Cano guy at all. Jeff got those exact point. guys at 8-9 last night. Right. And uh, okay. I got Cano in, in 9, like the middle of 9, just because, I mean, come on, it's middle of ninth round. But I love Story this year. I just think he was a third-round pick last year, and he got hurt. He's in Coors Field. He's like 25 years old. He's got ridiculous power. They're going to score a ton of runs. I, I like it. All right. So then, um, and then, so then where, where'd I go next here? The next ones I went, uh, Hector Norris and Zach Godley, but here's what I want to bring up here. And, and here's the problem that I have with this. I did check ADP, right? I have Brandon Morrow above Norris on my, my own relief pitching right. list. But he was like 60 picks ADP low. Right. Did you say that like the last week though? Or did you just do the, the ADP generally? I, I, I think I did the general one, which yeah. was dumb. Mistake. And of course, I'm on the wheel, so it's 24 picks. He almost did come all the way back, but anyway, Morrow was gone by the time he came back to me. So that was obviously that was a nutless was a monkey mistake. pick. Yeah, it was yeah. A, I mean, okay. but it was a mistake. Did. It wasn't a mistake. It was a nutless monkey pick because what you I were doing, was, what you were doing, was you were you weren't taking the guy that you liked best at that moment because of ADP. Right. And so you deserve no, right. you deserve the fate that you got basically. It was a good lesson to learn, uh, yeah. you know, an earlier league. I mean, a decent buy in, three hundred fifty bucks, but not you know not the the major ones. But I actually think the Phillies are an underrated team that's going to rack up some some wins this year. And Godley, who knows of the humidor, but um. So then twelve and thirteen, Greg Bird and Marcus Stroman. Stroman's whatever. hurt. Stroman may not be ready for opening day. That's I, I that was not my pick either. That's that's yeah. I don't I, yeah I don't like ah, that. Uh, Stroman. Jesus Christ. You That's, just destroyed your whole team the last couple of rounds. I ruined it in the uh, in the thirteenth round. Uh, you, you can't do that. So your only pitcher is Syndergaard and a bunch of scrubs. Well, Zach Godley. It depends what you think of him with the humidor. Uh, I mean, I think it's a good setup for him. But yeah, I, I'll, tell, I'll tell you, how I ran out the staff. Also, Blake Parker, okay. Jamison Tyon. I yeah, Tyon's got upside. Uh, uh, I'm probably going to pronounce his name wrong. Feria, the guy on uh, the Rays. Oh, on the Rays. Yeah, I don't know about that. Brad Peacock. I mean, I, like I actually Peacock. Man. Whatever. He's not, He's not a starter now, but who, no. who's all five are going to stay healthy? I mean, I love McCullers, but I mean, he's an yeah. injury prone weight. You know, Cole Hamels and Jay Happ, and Jeez. then uh, Andrew Heaney and Matt Bush. Oh, I got I got Andrew Heaney in the thirtieth round. <laughs> That's your only good pick after round okay. five, after round all four. Right. Wow, right. way to start off strong and then just completely give it back. Okay. You know, like I don't really like Stroman either, but you know, so I, I got like Trumbo super late. Ionetta as my second catcher in the fourth round. Malik Smith I took in the fifty. I'm sorry, the twenty fifth round. For steals, I mean, Smith and, and Hamilton, I don't know. I feel like Malik Smith's getting a little he's a, he's a fourth outfielder, though, Malik Smith. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, you think he's going to last? Yeah, I mean, he's not a great hitter, obviously. But, That's um, truly a garbage team that you drafted. I'll tell you what. I'll bet you 50 bucks right now that the team I drafted finishes ahead in the overall for, for that team. When did you draft? Uh, February 11th or something, like super early. All right. Okay. Even though I have no control really over that, um, I'm fine because I do. I will stand by the team. Other than I, it's funny that you you hate the pick that I hated the most too. I guess it makes sense. But yeah, I'm not big on Strowman. But fifty anyway. bucks. Fifty bucks. Whoever sure. Let's finished, do that. I'm, whoever give me more incentive. higher in the overall. Okay, that gives me more incentive to root for this team, and we're actually comparing the same overall. So sure. Yeah, it's say it right. It's not dependent on the league. So okay, right. fifty bucks on the overall. We'll start with that. Yep. We're gonna probably have a few yeah. sides in this podcast. I'm I'm starting to think. Okay. okay. So. So what else were you saying? So you're saying, you, you, what was what was your point though? You did this draft because you got oh yeah. It was just just wanted to get you know uh, get ready. I, I found myself changing my own rankings just at the time. You know I'm like really when push comes to shove, I, I would have drafted this guy. You know it's just a good exercise. I mean it's the baseball season starts earlier than ever uh, this year, and as I just mentioned, labor this weekend. Right. Um, friends and family tomorrow. Um, the the other industry league tomorrow. So it's a good time. I felt like I might as well. I think I got an email. I was a, a victim of. Uh, of a you know advertisement saying oh there's still six spots left for tonight and I'm like damn it so I, I went and I signed up but um I'm glad I did because uh, I made I made myself a uh, hundred k. I was just gonna say you donated to the pool it's nice. Uh, so I, I got I, I got invited to that Justin Mason league too and it sounds like a good league but I don't know how you guys say yes to all these leagues like Jeff Erickson's like oh yeah I'm in that I said yes to that I'm like yeah it sounds like a fine league but I'm in like eight nine leagues already. And that was with, that's with me not doing labor because it's too much of a commute to go all the way to Arizona. And that's with me. Um, what else did I drop out of? I dropped out of labor and I dropped out of, oh, the FSTA league because I don't go to that conference anymore, the one in L.A. So two leagues I dropped that I used to have. 
and I still have like eight, nine leagues. You know, ten if you yeah. include the League of Leagues yep. that you and I do that you do the work for. I mean, how do you guys even say yes to that shit? I'm always like, yeah, what, they, how do you and do baseball's it? way more than you know, oh, time consuming than football horrible. too. Is, you know, it's unbearable. Yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying. That one just seemed like a legit new industry startup. I mean, it just right. seemed like a no. I'm sure worthwhile. it's a good league. I'm I, I'm not shitting on the league. I, I'm sure it's a, a, a worthwhile league, but. Who has right, but I, I say no to most, and you're, you get to the point of you know diminishing returns. No yeah. question. Also, like okay, there's a couple things I don't like. One also is Sunday night, especially in LA. It's actually better here because it's like late. I could be here at midnight, everybody's asleep, and I can spend an hour and a half by myself just on the computer doing my moves. But like in LA, it's dinner time. All all the deadlines are, so it's like the on Sunday. So like if you're going away for the yeah. weekend and you're coming back Sunday, like yeah, sucks. It's horrible. Yeah, and when that overlaps with football, it's a joke too. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, and and it's just so you, you know, I, I ended up, you know, if my if I'm like in first place overall or I'm doing really well or everything's going well, I'll like have all this energy to dig in and like find all the key players. But when your team's like slipping and you have a couple injuries, and and that's exactly when like in June, like your team was in first and now it's in fifth, but it's still got a good team, but you've got a couple injuries that aren't coming back for another three or four weeks. That's when you really have to buckle down and be like, okay. I got to give it my all here. I got to really, really like keep my eye on the prize and know that these injured players are probably coming back and that I can make a run. But right. when you're like have eight, 10, 12 leagues to do all the moves for, that's exactly when you start getting unenthused. You're like, ah, oh, fuck, this guy got hurt too. Really? Seriously? And then you're mm -hmm. like, ah, all right, let me just put in some token moves. Like, I'll just do this in five minutes. I want to go get a glass of wine, you know? And then it, then it just ruins your season because then those guys do come back and you're like, ah. I guess this team is now in seventh or eighth because I've half-assed it. And I realize like, I, can't, I, think, I can't play like that. I think DFS can really help the season-long player in that, in that aspect of a, of a sense of, say, all your important leagues, you're, you just had a really bad season. Um, and normally you just check out in September. But with DFS, you're paying attention, so you're kind of following the league. So you're more prepared for season-long next year. I've kind of found myself, at least for myself, it's been that way. Yeah, I had a shitty year last year. I really, It was really a bad – it was one of my worst years ever. I don't know, just my team's – I, I was number one overall in the NFBC main for like two months, and then that team finished like, I don't know, seven. Well, I bring up sep September, but for you, you're probably looking at a DFS option like come May, usually, right? <laughs> no, well, first of all, I can't play DFS here, unfortunately. Right. I, I can like email Jeff a lineup and split it with him or something, but right. baseball, it's just too hellish. Like football is like once a week. Like I can't be like, dude, every day I need you to put these lineups in. So, Let's not focus on that. Let's focus more on me talking shit about you being out of it on your season-long leagues a month into the year. <laughs> I know. I got the joke that you're trying to make. It was hilarious. <laughs> it was really funny. So right. funny. We had Stefania Bell on the XM show today, and yeah. I was asking her about different you know, players that are injury-prone or injured. And I said, what mm -hmm. do you think about Pawn Felix? And she didn't, she, yes. didn't get, she didn't get the joke at all. She's not a chess player, apparently. Come on. Right. Pawn Felix? Right. Jeez. Yes. Yes. Come yes. on. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, it's very good. You're very yeah. good at puns. You're, I it's I mean, it's I the one just, area I'm, in which you're an expert. Yeah, that's just funny. Um, yeah. All right. So you want to talk about uh, what? It was real, I was really pissed when he was snaked like one pick before me last night too. By the way, Pawn Felix. Yeah. Well, I, I got Pawn in the in the in the 25th round. So I mean, I felt yeah. I felt good about that. I mean, you know, look. Oh wow. Uh, wow. Yeah, he went one pick before me in the 22nd round, and I had him. Cue, I would have taken him. Right. So. 25th round. I mean, 22 yeah. to 25 is like 50 cents yeah. worth of auction value, but still. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, I don't. I think he's going to fail. Don't get me wrong. I think he's toast. I mean, absolutely. But I, I felt this exact yeah, same. But, I felt the exact same way about Granky last year, right. and I was totally right. wrong. And now I'm just sort of like, okay, maybe you know, you never know with these guys. He would have been perfect to pair with Michael Hamels, though. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Do you have Johnny Cueto too? I do not, but uh, yeah. you know, I should. Sabathia, did you draft him too? No, no, Sabathia, no. By the way, are no, you getting... no, I know uh, mostly younger pitchers. Otherwise, but I do have like Cano. He fits the bill. Right. Well, I mean, a hitter last year bums older hitters. No problem. I'll take all those guys. Pitching, I've been burnt, and I learned my lesson. Cliff Lee, Roy Halladay. I was taking those dudes like CC Sabathia. I was like, oh, these guys are going to bounce back. And right. of course, they did. I would say so. Seriously, you joke about this team. That's fine. And I guess Stroman's just an awful pick. I didn't realize how hurt he was. <laughs> you just this is why it. you do drafts early. That's yeah. just awful. Now, Thanks for I the fifty bucks him. that you're gonna give me. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop him right now. But seriously, I'm gonna get number one in homers overall. Okay. Trout, Martinez, Hoskins, Justin Turner, 
Trevor Story, are you kidding me? Greg Adam, Bird. That's not that good. Greg Bird. I got Adam Duvall Listen, way late. I'll tell Mark you Trumbo, what. I'll, I'll tell you. is my number two catcher. Those, I'm going to absolutely dominate in homers. The last three guys won't even be in your lineup by May. But, but let me just tell you something. I'll let you give me $40 now and we'll call off this bet. Give me okay. 40 now and I'll let you off the hook. It would be a smart move for you. I would have let you buy out of it for forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Right? I mean, come on, this team is such garbage. Strowman um, is absolutely going to yeah. win the cycle. Right? Yeah, that's a straw man argument. It's a straw man argument. Yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, what was I going to say? Oh, are you getting just this? Is just a, a strange thing. I'm getting so much email spam. Is that happening to you, or it's just me? Yes. Why? What is what? All this fucking stuff, and I'm always trying. To, I'm always like, you know, junking it, junking it, junking it, and it's always the same guys uh, that keep sending me more stuff. Shark Tank. I had to like go into like my settings and say anything with the word Shark Tank yes. in it, yes. put that in junk, and then it's the same stuff. And no matter how much I junk it, a new one comes in from the same email address, and it's just it's wasting my time, and I just don't know what to do about this. This is a real crisis. And I'll tell you what, my cell phone. I got a U.S. cell phone. I haven't gotten a Portuguese one yet. So, I, you know, I can text and get, you know, slow internet if I'm out looking like, you know, for maps or whatever. Um, I can, um, you know, browse and text. But every phone call that comes in is fucking spam. If I answer the phone, it's like, this is, you know, the Affordable Care Act. Sign up. I'm like, fuck off. You know, every single day they call me. So now I just don't answer it. So if I don't know your name, if you're calling me, you know, you're on your deathbed, you're bleeding to death, you're vomiting blood and you need me to make a phone call to your wife or something. Not that I know your wife's number, but you know, you need something from me. I'm not answering unless I see your name on the phone. Like I, my, my cell phone is uncallable from a number now that is not one that I recognize because it's, it's all spam. And it's just like, yeah. what is going on? They, they need to fix this. This is getting out of control. I agreed with you about the, the, the spam and the email because I actually think I have specifically gotten that a Shark Tank one, but it's funny you say that. I swear this morning I got four phone calls on my cell that were just random, either 800 or a different area code. Four this morning, we're recording this at two o'clock in the afternoon, my time. And, and I, I, I've already bitching to my wife about it today. It's, it's, it's crazy that you bring that up. So something, I, I, is it random or is there some list that we're both on? I mean, this. I mean, we're obviously on a bad list of, of people for if they want, if I don't want to associate with you, whatever it's it is. too late. It's too late. You're already, you're lucky you're in the country because if you were out, you probably can't come in. We'll see what happens at the border in March when I come in for right. tout. But I'm, right. I'm ready. You know, I'm going to have my lawyer at the ready. You know what I mean? I'm ready to have a, a beef with that. Oh, sir, I mean, I don't answer my phone anyway or even own an an, a landline or I just text pretty much these days. And I mean, so it's not a, a big yeah, deal, but it's I, I, I'm older than you. I, I like to answer the phone if it's somebody who wants to call me. I don't like to necessarily, but I'm willing to do that. I know most people aren't these days. And the fact is, I'm not prevented from answering the phone if it's not a known number because I'm 90 percent and it's 20 cents a minute. So like, I don't want to waste 20 cents every time I pick up a call from some spam. So I'm just done with it. I just. That's it. If my phone rings, I ignore. And if it is somebody, I have to get a message or see that it's somebody because I don't even get up and walk across the room if my phone rings. It's a meaningless sound to me. Yeah. Well, do the other night in, in the middle of the night, my wife got a phone call. And it was from herself. Um, it said her, oh. her name was oh, calling yeah. her. Did you what ever see when a stranger calls? And, and they said the caller and, was coming from inside the house. Uh, yeah, the caller yes, yes. is yourself. That's even scarier. <laughs> when a stranger calls is actually a classic horror yeah, film that yeah. I recommend. Both part one and part two is like crazy with ventriloquist. I don't yeah. know if you've seen it too. I, I can't remember these part two, but I these are horrible B movies. But they're, I fully recommend that. But um, but that's this a is, new yeah. twist though. That would be part this three. This is a new twist. Next level. The call level. is coming from yourself. That's really <laughs> scary. <laughs> oh, no, next level shit. No, this is. But I googled it, and that's like a thing. Some 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 sort of hackers reroute right. numbers, and it looks and just don't answer it. Right. Uh, if you were debating it beforehand, don't answer it if you're self calls. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I know the collapse of society is imminent, but and this is probably just the beginning. This is sort of the, uh, you know, the couple of pebbles that are coming down the hill before the avalanche. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Do you have any thoughts on uh, what is happening throughout the the world? I mean, it's all bad. Like China's president now just like abolished term limits. So he's going to be like another Putin, but in China and like way more powerful. Like this Putin thing's a joke. Like he's like half-assed. J he's the JV, right? Russia's the JV. The China's the varsity. Okay. So they're going to have a strong man who's running shit. That's not good. Um, obviously, you know, our politics are a joke. I, I actually think it's really interesting. This guy, and I'm going to give him some free promotion. He actually bought some advertisement. We had him on XM. I don't know if you listen to this guy, Ray Austin. And they have this um, fan-centric fantasy football, like FCF something, right? And it's this, whatever, I'm not, we're not getting paid for the podcast. So I don't have to get this right. But anyway, they have this like fan 
fan controlled fantasy football basically. And it's this crazy thing where the, the even like the GM and the the coach, it's all picked by the fans and the fans help in the draft and the fans help in calling plays, you vote and whatever. It's complicated. But I started thinking about this and I read about this online about something else and I was like, so basically they're going to do like a Madden version of fantasy football. And I was like, why don't we have this for politics? Like why are we electing these douchebags who are taking money from special interests and voting supposedly on our behalf, but obviously not voting on our behalf at all, but voting on whoever's paying them's beha behalf? Why don't we just – technology has made politicians in the way we have them obsolete, right? Like it should be like that fantasy football league where instead of like Mike Malarkey calling a stupid play and ruining Marcus Mariota's season and killing all his fantasy value, you know, if we could all vote Madden style of like, okay, throw long, you know, run, you know – do you know roll out and run if there's something there, or, you know, or run pass option or something, you know, where there's some upside to the play call? It would be right. way better play calling than Mike Malarkey. Like we're right, we we can both agree on that. And it's like these politicians voting on different bills and stuff. Like why aren't we like in your district? Like you all just vote on the bill directly, direct democracy, or you all just you know vote on. Do we want to put boots on the ground in some country that has no threat to us and spend X amount of dollars on it? You know, it, it's it's these politicians that got paid by some um, war profiteer, you know, some company that makes bombs and planes that are like, oh, of course we need to vote for this. This is a very dangerous, you know, adversary. And so they, they put us at war. Well, we a regular person doesn't care. We're not getting paid by these war profiteers to, you know, to, to, to start a war. So if, if we just voted directly, you know, if people, you'd have to maybe pass some sort of basic civics test or something. But, I mean, it, it's like this fantasy football game is starting to make me think, like, yeah, like the way we do, you know, do we really need coaches? Yeah, maybe Belichick we need. You know, maybe we need position coach. We need, really need play callers? Or, or can we do this directly? And, and we certainly don't need politicians. I mean, that's just a, an, an anachronism. That's something that modern technology really should make obsolete. So what, what's the solution? Well, I mean, it's, it's going to be slow and over time, and they're going to hold on to power really tightly, and all the you know, people that benefit from having their guy sort of you know, making decisions on behalf of everybody, which benefits some narrow interest group, is going to hold on to power. But you know, everything gets disrupted, and the cab companies got disrupted by Uber, and you know, the newspaper companies got disrupted by Google and Facebook. You know, it's not like the newspaper companies handed over the ad revenue. It just got taken from them over time, and then suddenly one day they woke up, and they had no way to get this money anymore. It just, it just moved out from under them. And I think, like, I don't know exactly how it would happen, but eventually if the technology's there, you know, disrupting the political system would be way, you know, would be huge. And obviously, Bitcoin and crypto is going to disrupt the banking system, but imagine disrupting the political system. And we don't need them anymore. You know, we don't need a guy. We have the technology to directly vote on these things. It would, it would have been too complex 50 years ago to vote on bills, you know, with everybody in the country, like, casting the vote and counting the ballots and all this stuff. You know why we don't have electronic online voting? It's because it's not because we couldn't do it. It's because the faster we have that, the more they're going to be obsolete. The faster the road is to where we don't even need them anymore. The reason we have these shitty paper ballots that take a million years to count and it's inefficient and hackable and all this is it's not. Yeah, they, they, they do that because if we move to like the truly seamless online system, we start to realize really quick. Why do we even need the, inter, the middleman? Why do we even need the actual guy? Right. Mm -hmm. And how nice would it be if those people were just out of work and all the consultant well, class that goes along with them? Well, we're going to start needing less and less of anything. I mean, just think about it. Look at the food industry. Why, 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 why is there even, I mean, everything's just going to be, you're just going to be handed electronic devices to order everything. I mean, it's just. Well, that's just yeah, a, but I mean, yeah. it, it, someone has to grow the food. Someone has to prepare the food. That's always sure. going to be necessary. Well, yeah, I'm not saying all together, but I mean, this is just starting. Unless, this unless is just you want to eat that Soylent garbage, it turn you into a. Right. Totally a nutless monkey. Literally, your nuts will shrivel up if you eat that shit. Yeah, yeah. You're not a big believer in the nutritional value of that. Of no, that, that's, that's garbage. I mean, you need to eat like real foods, you know. And, and that's always going to be necessary. And I actually think that, and people already know this. This is a big movement already. But that local and real foods grow from farms and not, you know, these Franken foods, these these chemical laboratory foods. I mean, people know. And you know, it's a lot of market. Like Pizza Hut just signed in with the NFL to replace Papa John's. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, it's good riddance to that douchebag, Papa John. I never have to see that dude's ugly face ever again on my TV screen. But, you know, Pizza Hut is, is arguably the most disgusting fast food among all the disgusting choices that there are. It's disgusting. So, you know, the fact the NFL is, like, shilling that garbage. And then, and then you have, like, you know, I mean, of course, you know, it, it ties into all the problems, healthcare and shit. Why do you think healthcare is expensive? Because people are eating fucking Pizza Hut. That's why it's expensive. Because you go to the fucking hospital because your gut is all screwed up because you're eating this fake, disgusting food. 
Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you say something else about uh, the uh, the whole Whole Foods recently? I saw you made some comment. On oh, yeah. Am, you know, Amazon owns whole, whole Foods because our uh, antitrust, there's no such thing as antitrust anymore. It's a bunch of nutless monkeys that just green light these mergers. And now they right. want to put Coca-Cola in Whole Foods. Now, Whole Foods to me is mediocre anyway. I mean, if you want to eat healthy, go to your farmer's market. If you have the money <laughs> to buy at Whole Foods, you certainly can buy at your farmer's market. But uh, they want to put Coca-Cola in and, and the Whole Foods people, you know, their subsidiaries of Amazon, CEO or whoever, says, you know, Coca-Cola is below the standards of our products. Right. And, of course, Jeff Bezos doesn't give a fuck. He's, he's the honey badger, right? He's just going in like, oh, who cares? You know, just put more of this stuff. And Amazon wants to go into healthcare. There's that whole thing like Berkshire Hathaway, Amazon, J.P. Morgan. They want to do healthcare. Hey, we're going to create demand. Get some Coca-Cola in people's systems. They're going to need healthy. They're going to have diabetes, you know? So that's going to be a, a good thing to sell your, you know, diabetes treatment products. So, you know, we, obviously the, the solutions are, are, are on their way, I think, slowly. Um, and then there's going to be resistance from, you know, people like you know, who are just trying to make more money. Right, right. Yes, yeah, so where do you stand right these days on cryptocurrency? I mean, it's not cryptocurrency. There's just one. And okay. I'm, I, I'm trying not to, I, I don't know, I said this on the XM show, like not to yeah. tweet about it and talk that much. A video is fine. If you're invested this far in a video, knock yourself out. Right. But it's sort of like saying, I have this big brick of gold in my house. Yep, it's right in my house. I got the code right. to the safe. You just got to, you know, it's, it's not something you want to be out there. Not that I have enough that I'd be a major target, but like if I, you know, these dudes who are prominent in the crypto area, they like show their Trezor, the Razor, you know, the, the, the Trezor or the Ledger. Those are like the right. cold storage wallets. And then they'll show their um, gun next to it. So they're like, hey, just so you know, I know I'm prominent, but if you come to get this, you know, <laughs> I'm packing. And I understand why they do that because... You know, they're targets. I mean, you, you don't say I have a bunch of gold in my house that's unprotected. And so, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm tweeting less about it, but I'm every bit as bullish. I just think it's the future. Just like I think, you know, eventually politics, as we know, it'll be obsolete. It's just the people who benefit from these, um, from these pernicious systems are going to hold on as, as hard as they can. And, and the best example I have, and I mentioned this on the XM show, probably on the podcast before, is the college football bowl process. Remember, it used to just be, like you, you get two teams in the Sugar Bowl or the Fiesta Bowl or whatever, and it was just based on like these – I don't even know who voted for it, you know, but right. there was like the committee, right. the NCAA, would just basically pick two teams to, to face off in the title game. And if there was a third team that was more deserving or everybody is deserving, but for whatever reason they didn't think they belonged, they just – that was it. They, they were SOL and they couldn't win. And so you know, now at least they have a small tournament. You know? and it was one of those things that held on for so long, even though everyone hated it, because the vested interests just held on until they until finally it got it got overturned. I, I think yeah, that's, that's ex exactly how this stuff's going to happen. Everyone hates it. Everyone hates healthcare. Everyone hates the way politics is done. But the vested interests have this stranglehold. But when when the technology shifts, they're going to hold on as tight as they can, and it's starting to shift. But eventually, it's going to move out from under them. What is it going to take? Is it's just inevitable? And or, I mean, it's 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 just it, it's I, happening. I think it's happening now, and I, I don't know what the time frame is, but I hope, you know, I was, you, you hope it's not bloody. You know, you hope the revolution is not bloody. You hope that it's just technology moved on, just the way that the newspapers lost their ad revenue that just moved on. You know, I mean, the antitrust should be splitting up Facebook and Google and all this shit. They're not doing their job, but whatever. It, it moved on from one model to the next, and, it, and it's, I think, like, these things, these things are obsolete, and they don't serve the larger public, and just... You know, once you sort of wake up and look around, you're, people are going to realize, yeah, why am I? Why are we doing this? And eventually, it just moves. Yeah, I know it just happens without a concern, uh, even conscious effort. I mean, or knowing knowing that it happened. Like like somebody does some kind of app where you can, you know, let's say they finally like get sick enough of like all these voting errors and irregularities and polling errors, <laughs> and so finally someone builds like an app where you can reliably, you know, they, they build an app where you can reliably vote and have it counted from home. You know, see, so oh, I had to wait online for six hours and my boss said I couldn't go on election. Like, that kind of shit. Like, that's ridiculous with today's technology. That should not even be an issue. It was pouring rain and there was too few polling places. Like, all that shit. It's all just fraud. I mean, the fact that, that our system is set up that way to deter people from voting. And, then, and make no mistake, it is set up. It's designed that way. Somebody's going to be like, no, we have a way to do it securely, remotely. And, and the people will be like, no, it's not secure. It'll get hacked, but they'll be lying. They'll just want it to stay the same. But eventually, they'll be able to prove that this is a good way to do it. And once that happens, you're going to see like that it's going to move fast. Like Once it's online and secure, they'll be like, oh, there's an app that you can actually you know, 
aggregate your vote or, or do something where you trust somebody who's smarter than you to vote or something. You know, they're going to have all these kind of ways that all of a sudden it's going to be like, wait, why do we have this guy casting the other votes now? Like, what is the, what is the reason for this guy existing? And suddenly it'll just change. You I sound like someone, who's lear- like someone who's learned his lesson from, from buying a bunch of Blockbuster stock. <laughs> why? Why is that? Just that, you know, that, you know, there's nothing they could do, you know, it just no, inevitable that's right. change. That's you right. know? I didn't I mean, buy Blockbuster stock, but uh, unfortunately I, I had Netflix stock early, sold it at a small oh. profit and didn't, and didn't oh. hold it. But, um, oh, no. Oh. no, not much. I no, made, I mean, that, I, that's actually great foresight. No, really. I mean, that's amazing. Like, no, 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 it, no, it wasn't me. It so, wasn't me. It was my brother had this guy. I might've been lost. My brother had this guy who prior to 2008, like would be like, Oh yeah, you should buy this. You should buy that. And everything he said would just go up ridiculous. Right. And then he'd like, oh, this Chinese company, you should buy this, you know, so you just buy it. And then I've all seen that shit. Code, but go ahead. Yeah, and, right. then, and then all that shit got destroyed. And of course, it's like a game of telephone, and I'm not the first call. I'm the last call. So, like, by the time I got out, I got wiped, you know. So that's when I owned Netflix. And I learned right. my lesson never, ever take tips, only invest in products, in companies that make products that you know. And I'm pissed because I sold Twitter when I got rid of my stock, my fangs in May. And, uh, and it's gone. It's like doubled since I sold it. And I believed in Twitter, but I just right. got, it was like, I had it for like two, three years and I'd lost money. And I just thought maybe Wall Street doesn't like this. Maybe they're right. There's no way to monetize it, but I should have, I should have held it. Speaking of Twitter, I just posted a crime story of the day. There's some like naked dude was driving uh, down the wrong way of a, of a highway on an ATV, an hour long police chase. There's, there's video footage, some dude on a, on his uh, cell phone record. It's pretty funny. I almost said something like, uh, so Chris List, did you get away? But uh, only, only someone very, very rude would, would, would behave that way on Twitter and miss, you know, talk like, misuse someone's avatar or some likeness <laughs> like that. You know, only some real asshole would yeah. do something like that. It's an asshole move, but I, would, I wish you had done that with my likeness because that's a real man that, that yeah, does okay. that kind not, of thing. Not a nutless monkey. Okay. No, right. not a nutless monkey yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, I know. I wish I had uh, included you, though, because some, some staff writer from The Ringer, like, immediately retweeted it, too. So, yeah. actually, he probably wouldn't have if you were associated with that. No, he would have been scared. Yeah, he would have <laughs> been scared. The Ringer. Anyway, so what, what, else is going, what else is going on, man? Any, anything new? I saw that you ended your experiment um, on, uh, on your latest blog. blog. You want to talk about that at all? Yeah, I saw, what I did was I did painstaking amounts of work to figure out exactly what uh, replacement value was last year in the NFBC 12 team, the same team that we just talked about right. that you and I both drafted one of. And it was like incredibly high because all these guys like Bellinger and Judge and, you know, Smoke and Logan Morrison just all went crazy. Uh, Whit Merrifield, Tommy Pham, they were undrafted. And um, so I was like, okay, well, this is replacement value. Let me run them through like the steamer projections and see like what the real, using real replacement value, what my numbers come out to. But it came out to like, well, there are only like six rounds worth of guys that were plus, you know, more than a dollar, you know, more than, you know, and, and like, even fewer that were more than like five dollars probably two rounds of guys and trout was like ninety dollars based on the values and the reason is that i realized that you can't mix actual um output with projected stats like <laughs> i would have to use like if you think about it right like the, the 50th percentile steamer projections they, they're not going to give you a distribution at the end of the year that looks anything like what it's going to be right i'm surprised they even have standing at like 52 home runs but usually you know, the actual distribution of, you know, the top guys to the bottom guys is way more skewed than the steamer one because some guys get their 90th percentile season and some guys get their 20th percentile season. So, but steamer gives everybody their 50th percentile regardless of skill set. And so you're using projections. So Whit Merrifield's like a negative dollar player with last year's crazy high replacement value. But that was just because steamer has him in his 50 percentile rate. Right. You, you know, he and the five guys around him, two of them are going to be way above and two of them are going to be way below or, or could be way, you know. So those guys would have been positive value. But because they're all projected at that low level, they all ended up underneath the actual replacement value for last year. And last year was anomalously high for replacement value. But even so, you can't mix real data, like last year's data, with this year's projections. It doesn't work. The projections are purposely uh, very milk toast. They're very middle of the road. So you're glad you put in all that hard work then, is what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, rewarding I, payoff. In retrospect, had I thought this through, I could have realized this point before doing the actual math to realize this point. But, um, but I, you know, I learned some uh, things. I, like that you, I think people appreciate that you showed your work. I showed the work, and uh, mm-hmm. I realized a couple things. Like I, I realized like how, uh, how risky it was last year to pick up pitchers off the waivers, how you really wanted to um, use the pitchers you drafted, if at all possible, last year. 
and how easy it was to pick up corner infielders uh, last year, and, and even you know outfielders too, but especially corner, you know, especially first basemen. Uh, and, and that just you know makes it just kind of guides how I'm going to draft this year, assuming it's it's similar, which it it probably will be, but you know there's no guarantee. Right. So there's a debate right now, um, a real long email chain about what labor should do this weekend because of the abnormally high amount of free agents right now. And these are AL only and NL only. So say someone spends 20 bucks on Jake Arrieta, they might be out that. And there's some people are saying they should get more in fab or this is different than most years. And others are like, it's three days before we're flying there right now. We can't change it now. So right. do you have an opinion? Because it really is interesting. Obviously and keep it the same. Fab. And that's just whiny. Okay. I mean, look, think about it. We're all in the same boat, right? We, we, I mean, I'm not in it this year, but you're all in the same boat. You all have, you can all bid an extra dollar on any of these guys, and you can all keep your mouth shut if you don't want to bid on them. And somebody's going to be risky and say, you know, take a risk and say, you know, Arietta say he's an $18 pitcher, and there's, you know, $9 would be half. So I'll go up to nine, you know, no problem. And if he doesn't make it, then you made a gamble, right? Let's say he stops at eight. Okay, well, if you think he's a more than a $16 pitcher and it's 50-50, which league he goes to, then, you know, you... You made a, a plus EV bet, and it shakes out how it shakes out. It may add some variance, but everybody's got the same opportunity. You know, you might say, I'm going to bid on all these guys and just right. hope you get lucky thinking, you know, yeah. and make a huge profit. And, you know, maybe that's worth it. Maybe that's sort of a overall plus EV strategy to say, like, hey, if, if, if two-thirds of them sign the AL, you know, I'm, I've just made a huge, collect, you know, a huge net profit. Yeah, it would probably end up being like half, but that was an interesting strategy I was thinking about doing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I guess it'd be more of a strategy if you were an underdog, which I might be in this league. I was yeah. terrible last year. These only formats. Do you like only formats? It's so much fun to fly to Phoenix and, and a live right. auction's great. Yeah. But really, it's I, I think it's a terrible format, really, because there's just no skill after the auction. And we're doing it a month before the season starts. The pickups are nothing. I mean, there's right. no one available. Well, it's funny because I've won, I've won um, Tout and Labor, and I've finished 12th a few times in, in NL and AL. And, like, I've had some horrible teams. Right. And I don't well, know if it's just my true. style of play, like that yeah. I'm super aggressive, and so it either pans out or it doesn't. But, it, you know, and I'd say, well, it's, it's just luck, you know. It's like I'm first one year, I'm 12th the next year. That There's no rhyme or reason. But then Larry Schechter wins it three years in a row. Tristan Cockroft won it three years in a row. So it's not total luck. I mean, it, you know, tout is there's a little more tout because you can make moves and bench guys and cores and do stuff like that. I think there's a little more, you know, maneuverability, a little more skill. You can pick up minor league guys early. As long as you put them in active. Well, what about for one, just in general, even forget the quirky rules in labor. What about only leagues versus mix? I, like, what's I, your I, ideal for twelve I, team, fifteen team? I, I like I like the main event NFBC the best. That's mine too. To me, that's yeah. my favorite. I, it's just the best format all around. Like the big money, the prize, the, the decent sized league prize. That's a few grand. That's really worth it. The depth of and it, that's fifteen team mixed. The depth, right? Fifteen team mixed. The depth of it, where. Um, you know, it's just the right depth. Like you can pick up great guys or a closer, but they're not just there for you. You really have to draft is really important and you right. have to be judicious with your fab. It's very, uh, that's to me, that's the best. No, thing. no trading, but transactions are still huge. Oh, um, huge. So I, I 100% agree with you. But my next question is this. What if you had everything the same except it being an auction live? Uh, I would love that also. I would yeah, love both. Would, I like drafts too. For, I, I like both. No, me too. Me too. But what, yeah, you can love both. But what, what would you prefer if you had to pick one? I mean, if it were live, I'd probably just do the auction, to be honest. Um, in, in, you know, there's pluses and minuses, but, you know, certainly sure. online, with the time things take, I'd rather right. it be a draft. And, and right. I, you know, there's something to be said about being done in three hours or something instead of being done in five hours. So I like that. Um, one thing I would change, and I, I do think, like, our industry, if we want to, like, build season long bigger, I mean, the NFPC is growing because it's, it's a really good product, but, like, I think we need to make it easier to do moves. And, like, people bristled at this when I said this, but I think there should be like, a, you know, a, a Zola type or someone like that, Todd Zola or some smart guy who, you know, does work for a lot of different companies who they hire to like just f arrange the free agent pool from pitchers and hitters, you know, in order. Now, not you, you anyone who's in, he just takes like, they would have given the master list of everybody who's a free agent in all the leagues. It's going to be overlap, but very similar. But, you know, so maybe only two leagues have a particular guy. He still ranks that guy. If that guy's not in your league, he doesn't show up on your particular list. But the free agents are then arranged in the order that this guy who pretty, knows, pretty much knows what he's doing and knows the player pool have set right. it in that right. order, right? So, so you, you go to look and you just see the top guys. And people say, no, the, you know, part of the skill is to dig for those guys. But you could still dig for guys. He might disagree and, not, and miss an injured guy that might be coming back in three weeks that you have hired. You don't have to do it in the order he says. 
but just keep it so that the first 10 guys I'm looking at are the 10 guys I'm interested in. Like, why are we all repeating the same exact chore of digging through the player pool to find the same 10 guys? We're all doing the same work. It's, it's a huge waste of, of time. I, I couldn't. I, yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. If you're in 10 teams, it's just it's just such a pain. And if you try to sort it by percentage owned or rank, it's irrelevant if you're in a weekly league because that's not going to reflect how much values changed in the past two days, maybe, you know. So it's really hard other than just specifically searching for that player. And it's a pain in the ass. One person agree. does the work of thousands in this case. Yeah. One person totally. does the work. I mean, because there's still the skill, the amount. No one's telling you any even right. they're not even giving you a suggested amount. They're right. just telling you. The, the people yeah. right and Agreed. they need to make it really easy like the software is better than it was but it's still not great so there, every software has its flaws for the the fab but the rt sports which i don't love the overall commission but i love how easy it is to like move guys up and down to start a list they all they got to just master that whole thing of like making it so easy so that if you're not like uh i gotta move this guy up one by one by one up to the top if i like this guy that have you know it should be there on the default it'd be super easy to move these guys in and out of list just drag a guy over move him up change the bid just type in a different bid it should be super simple but it's not and that shit adds a you know over the season it, it wears you down it breaks you down and if we want to grow this sport um, to be, you know, because fantasy baseball is the best. It's by far better than fantasy football, in my opinion. It's the most enjoyable to draft. But there's this huge drag involved, and people know it. And people are like, nah, I don't do baseball. I can't sign my life away like that. And, and I totally understand why. Yeah, do you do, so, all right, you do like baseball more than football? I feel like lately it's just been even crazier crapshoot than football, which is not the case typically. Right. But it's just been just, even last year just got so out of control with the DL usage because they changed the, the length. It's just, for me, it's just been just uh, even more of a, just a total, total crapshoot, who the hell knows, sport than it's supposed to be big sample, you know, baseball, you're supposed to know what you're getting, not quite basketball, but to me, I've been far more confident in, in, in predicting football players in baseball, and I don't remember it ever being that way, but, but maybe my memory's wrong. No, no, last year I felt the same way you did. I felt like I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I think part of it was the juice ball and all these randoms are hitting ridiculous home runs, and you're like, what, you know, who are these guys, like? You know, where do these guys come from? This is not, this, you know, how's Elvis Andrews hitting 20-something home runs? Uh, to me, that's just ridiculous. That guy's been around for like 10 years. He's never hit more than eight home runs. He gets 20. That's not predictable. You know, I mean, that, it was just the ball got juiced. Things got a little out of whack. And, and I, hope, I hope it's more, I mean, look, we all have to adapt to new developments as part of the skill set of doing this. But I agree with you. I, I, I felt very lost last year in baseball. And, uh, and I, you know, we'll see. I'm excited about my drafts, but who the hell knows? I may, I may have the same. I felt good about a lot of my drafts last year too. So, um, we'll but see. but, I, but I am with you though. Baseball, sure. I mean, it's it's yeah, so much skill, so much strategy. You can go so many different ways. Yeah, different formats. Obviously, it, it's awesome for sure. I mean, it's a it's a marathon and all that. One thing I uh, hype about my my Yahoo is they have that feature. I don't know if you've seen it, but you, like you can click like make sure your lineup if you're in a daily uh for a daily transaction league where make sure all the, the starters are in your lineup. You know that. Yeah, I, I do, but you know what I don't like about it is I forget to click it. If I were to remember to click it, then I would just do the actual starters. It should right. be like a default that you can set for the season, so that like right. if ever you have a guy on the bench, he goes in. The, it should just and it should be hitter or pitch like separate buttons for hitter and pitcher. Because pitcher, right. you know, it's like oh my guy's at cores, I'll bench him, and then you're like oh shit, I got the auto start in, and it will just put that guy in, right? If you have a, right. if you have a pitcher at cores, it's going to put him in if you if you have that yeah, on, right? So. Yeah, there I should think be a so, separate yeah. one, hitter and pitcher. And so you could click both or just one, or, and it's just hitter, say, and then just have that on for the season. You don't have to do it every day. And so basically, like, if anyone scratch, it automatically makes the move. That's almost never going to come back to bite you, the right. auto start thing. The problem, right. though, is, like, it, it should be more like auto remove the guy who's scratched because, it, it's you know, there's di games start at different times, and you're not going to necessarily know. Right, right. No, I know. It's not perfect, but, yeah, no, that's, that's what's yeah. tough if you're in a lot of leagues and they're daily. Man, yeah. that's no, it's I, definitely fine. I give away, like, so much every year on friends and family just missing lineup shit. I'll be like, ah, oh, my guy hit two home runs, has three RBIs, and he's on my bench. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, the labor is just a joke. There's no replacement value. So it's no, like but, you look at like a couple things because you're like, oh, I have a 1,000 fewer at-bats in this guy, this <laughs> team. You know, it's crazy. I yeah, mean, but I like that because it's like, well, you, won't, you can't do anything about it. All you got to do is draft well, auction well, you know? Well, the least amount of skill involved, the more you, you, you would like it. Uh, I understand. That. I, I got <laughs> well, no, I mean, you would think that, but then, you know, like Larry and Tristan. No, of course there there's year. a lot of skill involved. It's a different in, skill. Uh, it's a different skill. And, and actually, I think in labor, I don't know if you play in best ball football leagues, or, or I do this, I do this um, the Fantasy Index magazine rankings before the season. I did NFLs. Sure. No, no, not, not NFLs, but the Fantasy Index rankings for their magazine and NFLs. Right. 
Yeah. But the fantasy index, I always feel like, because it's different, because then you're ranking every player. You're not just drafting, right? So you're ranking every single player. And I used to do terrible in those things. I didn't have a great year last year, but I had been doing really well for a while. Mm-hmm. And I realized I didn't use my rankings. I used the safe rankings. Because the whole way it's scored is a war of attrition, right? If your guy gets hurt in week three, you're screwed. So it was like, always like rank Jarvis Landry higher than you would, right? Guys like that high who are just like durable and like get a lot of volume. Larry Fitzgerald, guys I didn't like. Rank them higher and you do better. Uh, and I think maybe Labor's, I don't want to say I'm going to do it that way in tout, but like it, it's a war of attrition, right? Like it's just about like oh, yeah. getting the yeah. most at bat. So you just, well, it's not just like who you draft. It's like just drafting, not to your preference, but more drafting to who's the safest value for the dollar basically. Right, yeah, and it's all about floor for sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. So what uh what do we got coming up tomorrow morning? Uh, I, I got the sixth pick. What pick do you have in uh friends and family? I'm, I'm, I got twelve. The, the reigning champ. Are we going on record here? What same bet as last? Same bet as last year. Two hundred. Two hundred. Yeah, okay. And then if someone wins at five. All right. And what I, happened last? Year? What was the outcome of the last? I had to send you five hundred dollars. It was horrible. It was right. truly horrible. But I I right. really didn't think you had it in you to win. Like I just didn't think. Like I was like ah yeah. P now. Do I want to send him five hundred dollars if he wins? You know, there are a couple guys, and I was like, ah, Dalton, I can easily do that. But there's no risk. There's no downside risk. There's risk for you, not for me. Yeah. But right. you're right. I, I I had to send you the money. You did win. A blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. Yeah. You're behind me, right? Uh, latter half. Of twelve. The first? I'm I'm picking twelve. Yeah. Yeah, I'll pick six. You think Kershaw's falling to me? I don't think so. No, Fred Zinke, I think is going to take him. Yeah. I think he picks ahead of you. I, yeah. so are you going to take a picture though? If if uh, you can tell me, it doesn't matter to me. I mean. I yeah, I'll probably sure, take a sure. picture. Part of me wants to take Stanton and have him just hit 80 Real man takes 10. He'll hit 80. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, heard, I heard he's on a new road regimen, too. <laughs> no, I wish, though. That would be so cool if he was on roads um, in Yankee Stadium. Right, right. He, uh, yeah, exactly. He, um, and this with, a, with the inning format, though, starters, stud starters are just so huge. So, so who are you taking? Um, I'll probably, probably, probably going to take Chris Sale. Okay, you'll take Sale. So... I know Jeff is going to take Scherzer if he's there at, like, mm-hmm. I think Jeff is 10 or 11. Yeah, and no, I love Scherzer. Who would you take? Sales is younger. It's close. I don't know. I, it would 50-50. And then I may, yeah. I may have to get Kluber at 12. And if Kluber's gone, which he could be, because Jeff's going to probably take a pitcher, I think. I may have to take real man takes <laughs> The real man takes Syndergaard for sure. The thing is, I think, like, the people behind me are not going to take a pitcher. So I think right. I'll get Syndergaard in round two. So I'll take a, you know, I'll take a hitter. Okay. So, right. Anyway. Well, that'll be- We'll see. Right. We'll see what yeah. happens. Cool. All right, man. Yeah, I, I think th- think that'll do it. I think we can wrap this up. Yeah, I want to point everyone to uh, I had to uh, Rotowire. Uh, your guy Mario, he wrote. Uh, the only only complaint I have is that it, I, I made a comment. It, it should have been a little bit more thorough, but yeah. otherwise, yeah. I point exactly. everyone to if you're interested in coordinators, um, any uh, distant family member of that coordinator and their third cousin, uh, check out that article. Seriously though, if you're if you're really into like uh, you know defensive offensive sides and changes. It's really it's, it's a great read. It is really good. Mario did it. Rotowire.com slash pod. You can get it 10 days free. I think we made that one free, but who cares? Just sign up for the free trial, and you'll definitely get that and all the other stuff. Um, one other thing, if you uh, are listening to this on uh, the podcast version of this, go ahead and like it on iTunes. Give us five stars. You can make a snide comment about Dalton uh, if you'd like, uh, but we appreciate reviews. And if you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, comment, subscribe, whatever. It's always uh, helpful for us. All right, man. All right, all right, let's take, take it easy. easy. All right, take care.